I especially would like to welcome all of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all say loudly praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, especially as we are going into this word of God, my brothers and sisters, you know, it's our, some of you here who have come tonight, maybe you are sad. Maybe you are going through a lot of difficulties in your life. Maybe some of you are depressed in life because of maybe you have a serious illness and doctors have told you, you know, you may not last for long. And some of you, maybe my brothers and sisters, may be having a job-related problem, finance-related problem, domestic problem, or relationship problem. And uh, you must have come here with so many problems in your life. And uh, tonight the Lord is speaking to you from the book of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28. Let's get into that. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to me, the Lord is calling you tonight. Whatever your problem you are carrying, my brothers and sisters. You know, God can give a shoulder to you in your problems. You know, I'll give you one example. One day, one person driving an open truck saw one person walking on the road with a heavy load on his head. He was carrying that load on his head and walking across and this truck driver felt very sad to see him in that state. You know, he invited him. He said, come on, get onto the truck. In the back of the truck, this man got in. After some time, the driving truck, this man looked through the mirror of the driver and looked back. And he took, where is this man? This man is still standing in the truck and carrying the load. <laughs> you see, my brothers and sisters, some of us are like that sometimes. You know, we don't want to keep the burdens down. That means we don't want to give the burden to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to carry our own burdens. That's where we get into trouble, my brothers and sisters. But Jesus is calling you today. Come to me whom you are finding the life burdensome. And I will give you rest. I will take over the burdens from you. And we have a mighty, strong Jesus who has got a mighty, powerful shoulders. My brothers and sisters, you know. So that is why, shall we all give a big hand to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to share with you a beautiful testimony. This is from a Hindu lady called Manjula in India. This Manjula, when she was born, doctors told this baby will not survive even for a day. She was very sick with some disease. But she survived. You know, then so many diseases came to her throughout her life. She survived all those. Then she got affected by the polio upon leg. God healed her. And there were so many other uh, blood-related issues. God healed her. And so many. Then finally, she got married. And she was praying and do all these problems which came into her life. She came close to Jesus. How? Because one incident happened in her life. Her sister did not have children. And this Manjula had joined a convent school. And she was going to the church sometimes. And praying to Jesus. But she was not serious about it. Because she had no relationship with Jesus as a Hindu. But one day, her sister, elder sister told her, I married for nearly six years now. I don't have children. I am feeling very sad. She was crying and crying and wailing. So this young sister of hers felt very sad for her elder sister because 
she used to love us so much. She was like a mother to her. So she came very sad. This nun, Manjula was in the school, was a very bubbly girl. Always smiling, joking, playing around, and people used to like her very much. Now suddenly she was very sad, and one of the sisters, nuns, in that convent school noticed her. She said, Manjula, what's mat the matter with you? You're looking very sad. You know, what's happened to you? You are so bubbly. And that time Manjula said, my elder sister was crying. Last six years she did not have children. So she's feeling misery. So I'm feeling miserable. So I just cannot smile at all, sister. Then that nun, that sister told her, Manjula, you are coming to the church. You know, when the whole father, the priest is lifting the host, that's the time Jesus is there, present in that host. You tell about your sister's problem and ask Jesus that moment to give her, give her a child. That's the moment you have to pray. And Manjula got a new hope. She started attending the mass. Every time the priest lifted the host, she went on saying, Jesus, give my sister a baby. Give my sister a baby. So went on praying. And my brothers and sisters, God answered a prayer within two months. Within the next nine months, that sister delivered a beautiful baby girl. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, that brought mighty faith to this girl in the Holy Eucharist and the Christianity. And she pressured at the family, I want to become Christian. I want to get the baptism. I want to receive that Holy Communion. And she became a Christian in the family. Hallelujah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, and she was praying to God, I want to have a husband, very prayerful, because I want as a family to sow the kingdom of God. She had a great desire now. And uh, she got one husband. He was into business, but he was a Sunday Christian. You know what is a Sunday Christian? You know, going only for mass on Sunday. And only his mind is on business only. So, but Manjula's mind is not in that kind of things. She was very spiritual. And husband was telling her he better and a father should find a place instead of this place. He should find a place for you to keep there only in the church. You know. So he used to chide her and joke with her. So what happened? This husband. But wife was praying very powerfully. That he should accompany her. And he should be with her in prayers. And spend time with God. This husband one day. Around 2.30 night. Started waking her up. Manjula get up. Manjula get up. He said Why? What's the matter? You don't know our business has completely flopped. We are on the, literally on the road and in a miserable. How are you sleeping? What she said, she got up and said, praise the Lord. <laughs> he got so angry. You know, what are you saying? Praise the Lord. You know, when I'm business, is, I'm sinking and we are literally on the road. You're praise the Lord. He said, yes, I said, praise the Lord. But also he said one more thing. You know, that moment. I want to go tomorrow. We are going to Divine Retreat Center, Porta. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> she said, because I'm not saying the because business fell, I am saying praise the Lord. But if tomorrow we are going to go to Divine Retreat Center. That's why I'm saying praise the Lord. Next day morning, they set off to the Divine Retreat Center. And husband had one relative in Divine Retreat Center. And who knew? He was a volunteer. And who knew? Father George Panakal. You all Father George Panakal? He was the director in the, I think Manak, he came here, right? Yeah. So, he was the, and he took him for a counseling session, both husband and wife, Manjula and her husband, Joy. So, when they are coming to the counseling, Father George Panakal is welcoming them. Manjula and Joy. He doesn't know the name. He's going on telling. Manjula and Joy, welcome to you to Divine Retreat Center. Hey, they got a shock of their life. How does a father know all this? You know, but God was revealing to everything. Father said, Joy, God, you are in distress now. 
Your business is in trouble. That's why you have come here. And God is going to bless you in a mighty way. You know, he's going to double what you have. You know, you do not have to worry. Surrender to God. You know, and Manjula, I can see the vision right now. You are like a tree. I can see that it's going to grow in a mighty way. And the birds of the air is going to come and sit on that. You know, and I can see the plains. You are going to go on a different, different countries and going to preach the word of God. And God is going to bring mighty blessing to your family. All the things Father went on telling. These people are shocked. You know, they did not have anything about that sort. Same thing happened, my brothers and sisters. When they came back, and uh, immediately did not things happen. Her husband got into deep trouble with the kidney related problem. He was on the verge of death. Manjula prayed with the heart and uh, asking the Lord in the promises of the Bible, quoting and quoting and quoting and quoting. She prayed and the husband got healed of the cancer uh, from the major kidney disease and he came back and he was recovered very fast from the operation. And that was the set. After that, Manjula one day got a, and now they had a mighty problem with the finances and the, all the business was down and they, they came to a state where they literally there was no food in the house. But she trusted in the Lord. She trusted mightily in the Lord. And both of the husband and uh, wife started praying, my brothers and sisters. And one day Manjula got the cancer. And God in a mighty way healed her completely from cancer. And my brother, all these things happened. And one day the husband got, you know, and a job in Oman. He came to Oman. Within no time, they settled the entire loan. And absolutely no loan for them. Hallelujah. All the debts were cleared. All the debts were cleared within no time. And not only that, God started using Manjula in a very powerful way, preaching the word of God. And she's traveling all over the world now and preaching the word of God, testifying for the glory of God. And today that family has been blessed. And her husband has a bakery in Bangalore today. And they have a child, got one daughter of theirs. They have got two children. The elder daughter is studying in Ukraine and they're doing the medical. And God has restored back everything to them. And not only that, this family is serving the kingdom of God. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The most difficult times, my brother, sister, this family was trusting God. You know, praising God, glorifying God, honoring God. And God never let them down, my brother, sisters. That's the power of God. That's why I let the word of God say to my brother and sister today here. You know, Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. Let's get on to that. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, blessed is the man, the one who trusts in the Lord, you know, whose confidence is in him. You are blessed if you trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are like a tree planted by the water, the streams of water. You know, that kind of a trees, the leaves are always green, right? They are bearing fruit always because they are getting the nourishment throughout the year. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, that's why we should be like a tree planted by the streams of water. My brothers and sisters, it's very important to trust in the Lord. You know what happens many people, you know, difficulty comes in that they lose faith and trust in God. They start doubting in the power of God. You know whether my God is capable of, you know, bringing me out of this problem. They have a faith crisis. I've seen so many people, they come and cry to me and tell me, Brother, I'm in this deep trouble now. I don't think I can come out of this. How am I going to come out of this? But I want to tell something to those people. You know, as the Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and have confidence in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 30 to 27 says very clearly, my brother and sister, the Lord says very clearly, I am Yahweh. I am the Lord. 
God of all mankind, is there anything impossible for me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is telling you, is there anything impossible for me? Because I am the God of all. I am the creator of you and the entire universe. Is there anything impossible for me? Is there anything impossible to God? Hallelujah. 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 My brothers and sisters, that's why you need to trust in God. I want to give a beautiful testimony. Few days back, three days back, it's one lady called me from United Kingdom, UK. You know, she started telling me, brother, I'm watching your preachings on YouTube regularly, and it is really touching my heart. You know, there are a lot of things happen in my life I want to share with you. I said, yes, sister, please go ahead and share. She told me her name is, uh, you know, Ida Dias. And last three years, she has been residing in the United Kingdom. And, uh, and what happened, her niece, Cresilda, is here. I'll ask her to stand up later. She's sending all my preaching videos through the, this link to the YouTube. And they're watching over there in UK. And uh, this particular lady told me in that year 2017, what happened, her daughter, young daughter in the 20s, got meningitis fever. About 30, I think so. She got meningitis fever. And suddenly one day night, she told mother, mommy, I cannot get up from the bed. I just can, cannot walk. I cannot move. So the mother was horrified. What happened to this young daughter? Working girl. And then they rushed her to the hospital. Doctors told she has got meningitis fever. That's brain fever. And she will survive not more than 24 hours. Think about it, my brothers and sisters. 24 hours maximum she will survive. What a shock to the mother. But that mother had developed confidence in this mighty God. You know, she had a great faith in divine mercy. She started praying the chaplets after chaplets after chaplets of divine mercy. And my brothers and sisters, and the daughter survived the first 24 hours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after that, my brothers and sisters, it took 22 days. And the daughter was out of the hospital and discharged from the hospital. And after eight months, she was completely, even sometimes manager his fever. Some people, even if they survive, they will not be in a position to do anything. Sometimes they'll be a handicap for years together or for the whole life. You know, in that state they are, in a vegetate, uh, vegetable state, they say. You know, my brother, but in the case of this mother who trusted in God, prayed for the healing of a mother for the divine mercy chaplets, praying and crying to God, God healed her. In eight months, she was completely healed and she went back to work today. Let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. 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 Not only that, my brothers and sisters, you know what happened? One day, she herself got a cancer, breast cancer. She survived that, trusting in and praying to God, God healed her. And her husband, she told me, was an alcoholic. And, uh, you know, she started praying. They were in India at that time. She started praying the divine mercy chaplets and praying for the conversion of her husband. And God touched him in a very special way. He was completely delivered. He went to the Divine Retreat Center in Chennai in Tamil Nadu. And five years, he testified for, the, for God in the retreat center to thousands and thousands of people and did the volunteer work over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, this is how that lady testified to me. Miracles after miracles. Today to, she told me, Brother, I've got a big Divine Mercy statue in my house and it is so beautiful. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Her niece is here who is, in, uh, who is very influential to bring, uh, spread the Divine Mercy mission. Cresilda, wherever you are, can you stand up and testify for your auntie? 
Tresilda, are you there somewhere? Yes, she right there in Tresilda is there. Yes, shall we give a big hand? She's the one who is evangelizing. Yes, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, that's why the word of God says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and who has confidence in him. Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 10. Nehemiah 8 10. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. You see my brother, sister, just like Nehemiah, we should have the joy of the Lord in us. You know, how do we have the joy when we have trust in God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus 15 two. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My brothers and sisters, how important it is. You know, we need to understand that God is our strength and our salvation. Hallelujah. 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 And he is our defense. He is our strength. He is our salvation. This is very important to understand, my brothers and sisters. Again, Psalm 46, 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. David says that. You know, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their singing. See, my brothers and sisters, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of our trouble. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In times of our trouble, God is our strength. He is our help. We need to believe and trust in it, my brothers and sisters. That's why it's so important. I will give you one beautiful testimony about a youngster of 21 years. His name is Dwayne Fernandez. His mother sent me this testimony because his mother Mary her name is Mary Fernandez, and she's regularly getting uh, my preachings in India. He's get, she's getting my preachings. And uh, what happened? Recently, I said about, uh, I think, uh, 10, 15 days back, her son, one friend of his came to the house, and father, son, and their friend, they had a meal together and dinner, <coughs> and... Then the son, 21-year-old Dwayne, went to drop his friend to his residence. It's about uh, close by. It's not very far. But when he was coming back at 12 o'clock midnight, mother was working, I think she's a night shift. You know, and when he was, that, this son was uh, riding his motorbike and coming back in Mumbai, this particular area, there are a lot of stray dogs. So that stray dog started chasing him. You know, when they are barking, bow, 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 bow. You know, what will happen? And he increased the speed because he was scared that they come and bite him. You understand, no? And especially the dogs are very attracted to motorbike sound. Isn't it? Yes, yeah. Sister, are you riding motorbike? <laughs> okay. You see, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. So, and he increased the speed. And suddenly, he did not saw one speed breaker. That's the hump. He went over that, lost the, you know, balance, the motorbike flew and hit the divider. You know, and this boy, young boy, fell on his chin straight onto the footpath in the, in the hard rock. And he was in unconscious state. And suddenly, and started bleeding profusely from the body. Suddenly, two young men, like angels, they came and they took him and uh, to the hospital close by. But they did not, that the hospital did not have the equipment 
for this serious case and they uh, told please go to the next hospital which is close by who has the equipment but the problem here these two angels who had come they do not know who is this boy and now they are to because this young man had one mobile they found out and uh, see the God's mercy that day this young Dwayne had gone to the repair his mobile and he did not lock it so they could open it easily and said that dial the last number which he had dialed and he saw and suddenly it went to the same person he went to drop that and he met with accident and immediately that friend came rushing down and they took him to the hospital here in a mother was told mother came and saw the state of her son but the son now could open his eyes a little bit and uh, saw the mother and he said you know mommy you know give me that bindi bhaji you know what is that thing they are eating they is very fond of that bindi bhaji and the roti for the last time oh my god mother got a literal shock hearing that last meal i am going to eat from your hand he said and that brought broke the mother completely she started shouting screaming so hard the doctors pushed her out of the icu you know and then afterwards they started and the doctor started you know the work on him and uh, he was breathing so profusely and the chances were very less whole mother was out of the icu praying the whole night divine mercy chops and praying and asking god's mercy and mother mary's intercession on all these prayers were going on and intimated to because intimated to some other prayer groups also and we were also told to pray because her uh, cousin sister maria fernandez is now group and we were also told we started praying and interceding my brothers sisters the photographs came in a very serious state and uh, in the morning he opened his eyes you know and but the recovery not but still this boy was in a very serious state and now he had to be operated because the whole face was uh, smashed like and so many jaws were broken and so many things major problem and now he had to undergo major surgery for all this also because now he is out of danger doctor said that was a big relief for the family but my brother and sister the, that's a major operation so doctors told what are the things they are going to do and so mother was told to tell the son and make him prepare the son for the operation and along with that five friends of his also went to prepare him for the operation but i think the way they told this boy went into panic mode and literally became unconscious and the doctors threw all five of them out of the icu and sick with the mother and they shut the icu they said you brought the panic mode the boy a blood pressure went from 140 to 170 and he was in a very serious state now and these are all five friends and mother out of the ice you know the doctors had thrown them out and now they closed the door they started praying and interceding and crying out to god and again he became after one or two days that operation was held on a, can we see the boy and how is his state you know this is the state here yeah. let's see some of the photographs maggie yes see this is duane yeah i want to show you yeah he was in this state in a very serious state now he started slowly slowly recovering you can see in this state you know and see his x-rays is showing all kinds of a jaw completely broken and this you know my brothers and sisters and uh, now this young man my brothers and sisters doctor did a major operation on him you know so many things and the screws were put and uh, sitting on the face and because of the power of prayer at the intercession you remember not last friday the previous friday all of us lifted the hands and prayed here remember this young man i told last in a dwayne fernard shall we all lift we lifted and after that they said there was a major major improvement in the health of this boy and now this boy is almost completely healed and he is at home taking some physiotherapy all for the glory of god shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah all thought he was lost but he was found by the power of prayer of a mother who are dedicated for the divine mercy and who are listening to the word of god which i am preaching every week after week on the youtube plus she is getting also the our intercessions also and all the things and they are very prayerful family that's why god sent those two angels to help that young man not only that even this phone was not locked 
If the phone would have been locked, it would have been a great problem, isn't it? That even that, that particular day, phone was not locked. So they could find the right person and all this happened because that mother trusted in this mighty divine mercy Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that is why we need to have the trust, my brothers and sisters. Whenever we are in trouble, we should not run away from God, but come closer to God. That's why James 4, 8 says, nearer you come to God, nearer he will come to you. Praise the Lord. Nearer you come to God, nearer he will come to you. Some of the people, <clears throat> when the prayers are not answered, they said, oh my God is not answering my, they start running away from God. They become atheists. You know, they think, oh my God is not answering, I don't want to. You know, listen to this God. This is a terrible God. All kinds of things, they run away. My brother, and sister, running away will not solve your problem, but coming closer to God will solve your problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. My brothers and sisters, this happened to Julie. You know, Julie Gonsalves is one of our members of our prayer gathering here. Young girl. She was a Sunday mass goer. You know, Sunday Christian, as I said. You know, she came to this country because parents are here. And uh, she joined, a, got a job called sales and marketing coordinator. And she worked there, but she had no career because she was in HR, you know. So she wanted to go, get a job in HR so that she can, uh, you know, improve her career. But my brothers and sisters, after some time, she joined this particular new job in a big company for in the HR department. You know, but... Initially, when she joined, she was very happy. Within a day, she saw two people resigning. She got a shock. Such a big company, why the people are resigning? Within one week, she came to know why they are resigning. Because there were too much harassing. So she, literally, she used to come crying home, and she was not happy with the job. So many problems around. One year, she worked, and finally, she was sacked from the job. You know, but after that, you know, she thought maybe because of a qualification and all, she may be able to get the jobs, you know, but it was not so. She was trying and trying and trying, you know, but nothing was working. Seven months, she tried and applying here, there, and she used to read the Bible. She was not much into prayer, you know, but they started coming to Divine Mercy Prayer Gathering. Mother told her, why don't you do the novenas of Divine Mercy? My brothers and sisters, and this young girl with the family, you remember we had a Divine Mercy Novenas were held recently for the, during the 28th April we celebrated the Divine Mercy Feast. Before that nine days we had Novenas here right here in the compound. They started coming for the nine days of Novena. Along they're going to a mass coming for the Novenas. The moment she started reciting these Novenas, she said she started getting so many calls. You know, seven months she did not get any calls. But after that she started getting wonderful jobs opportunity. And by the time, and many people told her, you will not get a job during this Ramadan period. It's very difficult. But my brothers and sisters, she got, she trusted God. Divine mercy, Lord. And she got a job, not before Ramadan, not after Ramadan, but during Ramadan. Hallelujah. And my brothers and sisters, she got into a beautiful company and she got the appointment letter and she's joining on Sunday and she asked me to testify for the Lord. I want Julie to stand and testify for the Lord. She right there, my brothers and sisters. Let's give a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, Julie. You know, so, you know, today the God has blessed her with a beautiful job. So my brothers and sisters, you need to trust God. You know, that's why it's so important. Ephesians 3.20, this is the word she held on to. And Mark 11.24. Mark 11.24, therefore I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Praise the Lord. She firmly believed in this scripture. She held on to this word. Again, the word in Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. You know, God is able to give you more than you ask or 
imagine. Hallelujah. If you trust in the Lord, He's able to give you more than you ask or imagine. My brothers and sisters, that's why it's so important to trust in God. And here, uh, Psalm 9, 10, let's go into the, those who know your name, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Hallelujah. Amen. God will never forsake you if you seek him. Seek him with all your heart and you shall find him. Jeremiah 29, 13. My brothers and sisters, I have a beautiful testimony for this also. And it is about a sister called Flavi Lobo. You know what happened to Flavi Lobo? She had started getting about two months back a right hand you know, tremendous pain in the right hand. She was not able to lift, you know, it came to such a state. She initially, she went to a doctor and initially she tried all these uh, painkillers and uh, bombs and massage, nothing worked. You know, no medication, tried nothing. But later on, he went to the orthopedic doctor and doctor said, there's nothing serious and you take these painkillers again, he gave, nothing happened. Again, the pain continued severely. She went to the second orthopedic doctor then doctor did some, you know, the x-ray and they found in the x-ray one slight strain on her neck. Slight strain on her neck. My brothers and sisters and the doctor said uh, and he gave the all kind of a medication for that, painkillers and so many other things. But nothing worked. The pain went on increasing. And she was not able to sleep also because that pain was terrible. And she was not able to lift her hands and she was suffering so much. You know, and she was crying on last Thursday. She said she was crying, to, you know, with that pain. And that time, it's like an inspiration. She got one, like a, literally she felt, she heard a voice, voice saying that, go to Brother Alfred and ask him to pray. You know, my brothers and sisters, she came to me on Friday. She said, Brother, I have a pain. Please pray over my shoulder. I laid my hands upon you and after the session, I prayed for the people. She came here. I laid my hands and I prayed over her. Asking the Lord to touch and heal her. My brother and sister, she said on Saturday onwards, her pain started decreasing and now completely disappeared. I want Flavi Labu to stand up and lift your right hand and wave it and show to the people that you are completely healed. See that hand. And she's living and showing to all of you for the glory of God. In our two months, nothing happened. All doctors she tried. Nothing but the doctor of doctor, Jesus Christ, his name is here. He healed her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, that's for the glory of God. You know, the God does marvelous things, my brothers and sisters. We need to understand. So many of people, my brothers and sisters, when they get into trouble, you know, they lose the trust in God. I'll give you two examples, two testimonies. The number one testimony about a young man, he came to a priest, retreat priest. You know, he told the father, I am in great distress. You know, I tried many businesses, everything went into loss. And I have a wife who is a grumbler, and we have got a very bad relationship, and I have no peace of mind. And I have a child, and he is a special needs child. You know, literally handicapped type, you know, special needs child. So I have no peace, father. So what's happening when I'm coming in this district, my business is down, I'm coming home, and there's so much grumbling from my wife, I feel miserable, then I take a lot of alcohol, and I drink, you know, heavily, and that night I forget about everything. <clears throat> but next day morning, the same stayed father. You know, my brothers and sisters, here is a man who is trusting in his own strength. You know, and the things of this world to drown and come, overcome his difficulties. You know, and several times I thought of committing suicide and go on the railway tracks, Father, and commit suicide. But now I did not get that kind of a strength, Father. I am in that state. See, this young man is in that state and he's trying to drown his sorrow with that alcohol. The second, here, this man is in tremendous sorrow because he's not trusting in the Lord, but he's trusting in his alcohol to drown his sorrows. The second incident about a lady who came to this same priest. You know, this lady <coughs> has a leg problem. She's a kind of a handicapped lady. She's married. They have no children. 
Her husband is into depression and literally bedridden. Most of the time he's on the bed. So you imagine the state of this family. And this lady, to earn their living, because husband cannot work, she is going to the you know, domestic houses, different, different houses as a housemaid, working a part-time, gathering the money and feeding the husband and herself and the mother-in-law also. So my brothers and sisters, she came to father. Father said, how is your house situation? You know, how, how are you doing? She said, father, there's nothing less for us. We are happy family, father. Because our God has blessed us so much, Father. We are happy. We have nothing less, Father. Hallelujah. A lady who is handicapped, who is working as a domestic servant and feeding the husband, and the husband is bedridden, and his feet had to feed, no, no children. And in this state, my brothers and sisters, and in this miserable state, one lady is telling she is happy how it is possible. It's only through the power of this mighty God she is contented with this Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my brothers and sisters, your sorrows, anything comes into your life, come to the feet of Jesus. Come to the feet of Jesus. Don't run away from him. As I told you, James 4, 8 says, nearer you come to God, nearer he will come to you. Remember this word, which I said, you take one step, God takes 10 steps. You take 10 steps, God takes 100 steps to come to you. Hallelujah. So my brother, whatever your problem may be today, surrender to this wonderful God and trust in him. I'm sure he's going to deliver you. He's going to bless you in a mighty way. Today is the day to come back to the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Let us all repent for our sins. As in the book of Acts 2.38 says, Acts 2.38, listen to this word. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, <clears throat> every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Peter replied, when the, he preached the word of God, the word touched the hearts of people. They came to him, brothers, what we must do? Then Peter said, repent and be baptized. Repent means come back to God. Repent for your sins. You know, grieve for your sins and re really have from your heart decide to change your life. And every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So tonight you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You need to repent for your sins, my brother, sister. You want to receive the joy of the Spirit. You need to repent for your sins and come back to the Lord, my brothers and sisters. I'm sure, you know, if you come back to the Lord tonight, I'm sure God is going to bless you with this Holy Spirit. He will give you the peace of mind and heart. He will deliver you from your problems because you have come today to the right place and the right person that his name is Jesus. Shall we give him a big hand, my brothers? Hallelujah. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Divine Mercy Sharjah, and hit the bell icon to be the first to receive preaching videos by Brother Alfred. Watch, share and evangelize.